Coming up, we're all about making a statement. We get bold with the perfect shade of lipstick. We get inspired by a landmark piece of architecture. Though her signature may be architectural, to me that's just an utterly feminine piece. We bear all with this season's trendy top. I love a crop top. I think a crop top's fun. It's a party top. But first, a 90s denim look comes back to the fold. The Canadian tuxedo is hot now. This is Style Factory. Imagine, if you can, life without jeans. If I was stranded on a deserted island, my jeans would be coming with me. Everyone should have a pair of jeans. Every man, woman, child, I mean, even your dog. They've become, I think, the most popular item of all time for a reason. Denim jeans were invented 130 years ago by tightly weaving cotton and dyeing it blue with indigo. And jeans really are the uniform of modern life. But they were initially worn by working men, people working in farms and fields and miners. But then it wasn't until the 1950s with the greaser culture that jeans became this popular fashion item. Since then, jeans have exploded into every shape, size and cut you can imagine. Okay, so skinny, high waist, boyfriend, boot, straight leg, light wash, medium wash, dark wash, ripped, distressed, crop, boyfriend, embellished, faded, Trade bottom. Teen shorts. Is that a lot? I think that's it. Not even close. Plus, who can forget the Canadian tuxedo? A top to tail denim look that hit its apex with Britney and Justin in the late 90s, and it's making a modest comeback. Well, the Canadian tuxedo is a, is a great invention for me because we sell denim shirts, we sell denim jackets, we sell jeans. Canadian tuxedo is, is hot now. Brandon Spark is the fast talking, highly enthused founder of Naked and Famous Denim that proudly caters to all your denim needs. All of them. Well, I love denim because it's, it's versatile. Like we've made glow in the dark jeans and raspberry scratch and sniff jeans and silk blend jeans, 32 ounce heaviest jeans in the world. So I get to play with it and make amazing stuff. It's pretty much my dream job. Naked and Famous's best-selling jean is the weird guy. It's jean shaped like legs, so it's a little bit wider than the thigh and then gradually taper down to your ankle. We call it the weird guy just because I'm a weird guy and I like funny names. Like all Brandon's designs, the Weird Guy jeans are manufactured in this hip studio near Montreal, Quebec. And they all start as selvage denim imported from Japan. We love selvage denim because the Japanese make it the old school way. It's dyed in a special method called rope dyeing, which fades very beautifully. It has like that rawness to it. It makes the jeans so much more masculine and it looks great on men's butt. Before the jeans can enhance derrieres, they start as rolls of plain denim. The fabric is laid onto the cutting table 45 layers thick. From this, nearly 400 pairs of jeans can be cut. And the design is remarkably complex. As a single pair of jeans uses 15 pieces of denim, six brass rivets, four buttons, and 190 meters of yellow gold thread. The legs are made of four major sections, two front panels and two back panels. Those are stitched together at the seams, including a button fly. The back end of the legs, yes, the butt, intersect to form an area called the yoke. And it's all held together at the top with a waistband complete with belt loops. To get started, Roger uses an electric straight knife to cut each piece by hand. One thing I love about our construction is that we use very old special machines. There's no plastic parts like when you see a modern machine. I love that these machines are like tanks and they make a denim that is built like a tank as well. That heavy-duty construction starts with the detail pieces. First, the fly section is put together using an overlock stitch. Overlock is a type of stitch that can close an open seam. And then the keyhole buttons are made with the keyhole button machine. Next, the coin pocket is sewn onto the right pocket sections. Denim nerds look out for the hidden selvage coin pocket. So if you look on the coin pocket of your jeans and you look inside or look on the top of it, you'll see a little selvage edge there. The back pocket pieces are hemmed, then pressed onto the top of the leg, before being whizzed across to get stitched into place. 
Then we use uh, one of my favorite machines, which is a feed off the arm machine. They say that you can't make vintage jeans without this machine. And the yoke is then uh, passed through uh, this machine, which is done in a feed off stitch. Now, the leg fronts are joined to the back. Each tapered leg is stitched inside out at the seams. What a tapered leg does is it hits you uh, closer to the ankle and it makes your foot look longer, which makes your leg look longer, which makes you look taller and slimmer. And that is the most modern fit. Before they head to the finishing phase, the jeans are flipped inside in with a nifty vacuum machine. The waistband is attached, pulling the legs and the yoke together in a perfect pants shape. The belt loops are added next. Brass rivets are attached to the pocket corners and buttons popped onto the fly. Finally, it's labeling time. There's the leather patch on the waistband and the paper tag that attaches to the belt loop, tucking into the back pocket. Ready to pair with just about anything. Just going with a plain t-shirt and a pair of running shoes, you're good to go. But that same pair of jeans with a crisp white shirt and a great high heel suddenly is a completely different thing altogether. These jeans are fresh off the rack, but they have to get out to come alive. For me, the only way to distress a jean is to wear it. You know, go out and uh, play sports in it, or uh, go to your job, or uh, ride a bike, do whatever you do, just wear it and live your life in it. Up next, we get vertical with the season's popular crop top. The line, it needs to go from here to here, never here, here.